All right, so thank you everybody for attending the session. I, what I want to do now is introduce our guest speaker for today. And his name is Corey Jones. Corey Jones, better known as CJ, the, the empowerment speaker, is a graduate of Texas Lutheran University where he majored in kinesiology with a minor in, in psychology. Corey is currently pursuing his master's degree in clinical mental health from Our Lady of the Lake University. CJ has been involved in advocacy in advocacy work for the past 18 years and he has, he has dedicated his life to serving and empowering people to become their best selves. CJ has worked in var with various people from different backgrounds, cultures, and ethnicities. He has spoken at numerous conferences throughout the U.S. and internationally. CJ has uh, taken the world by storm with his intense and creative style uh, presentations on self-improvement, mental health, and leadership development. CJ is a Les Brown certified professional speaker under the Your Power Voice program and a life coach. He is currently featured on, on the number one motivational speaking app uh, in the nation called Pep Talk with Les Brown, Eric Thomas, Oprah Winfrey, uh, Dr. Miles Monroe, and Tony Robbins. CJ has been interviewed by Fox, NBC, and CBS News as seen in uh, Buzz Magazine. CJ has been quoted in the Huffington Post and is a three-time author, including Surviving a Christian Marriage, A Quick Guide to Mar Marital Bliss, uh, Follow with Intent, Lead with Purpose, The Qualities of a Leader, and, um, and writing a book, Nine Simple Steps to Get It Done. CJ was awarded the Healthy Teen Network Outstanding Father of the Year Award in 2014. So with outstanding, excited to have you here. Uh, great resume there. And I'm going to go ahead and just pass it over to Corey and just, just let him do his thing. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank everyone for being here. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank the Man and Me organization. Thank Isaac Rowe. Thank you, Ronnie, for you know working with me in the tech. Uh, thank Josh Banks, Marcus Griggs. I just want to say thank you all for being here. This is an honor. This is a privilege to be able to share with you all this morning. And so the title or the theme of this conference is Weathering the Storm. Now, I don't know about you, but I do know that I've been through some storms in my life. And some of these storms, I didn't think I was going to make it out of. Even with this pandemic and stuff going on right now, some of us are weathering the storm. You were trying to figure out what we're going to do, how we're going to make it. Relationships are falling apart. You know, people are walking away from things. People are losing homes, cars. A lot of things are going on right now in this pandemic. And weathering the storm is most definitely appropriate for this conference. So without further ado, I want to dive right in. And today we're going to be discussing the importance of establishing legal paternity because for fathers, believe it or not, that's one of the toughest storms that we'll ever, ever weather is being a father the right way, right? Because there, there's people say there's no right or wrong way to be a father. There absolutely is a right and a wrong way to being a father when it comes to the court system and doing it the legal way. So if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you and we're going to dive right in. Okay, here we go. Perfect, perfect. Let me get this set up. Okay, so here we are. So the importance of establishing legal paternity. And this is a father's key to all access. If you didn't know, there's a way that you can have access to everything just about the mother has as a father. But a lot of people don't know about this because this is not talked about. This is not information that they're teaching in schools. You can't just go anywhere and learn this information. You actually have to be involved in the system, know the system to be able to understand some of these key principles and things I wanna share with you today. So let's dive right on in. So some of the objectives that we have, you're gonna be able to identify the three types of fathers and the roles they play. What three types of fathers and the roles they play? Absolutely, there are three types of roles a father can play and there are three types of fathers. So you're gonna walk away learning that today. You're gonna to learn the three pathways to establishing legal paternity to gain access to their child's school and medical records. So I'm gonna teach you the three pathways to establish a legal paternity for your child so you can have access to a lot of things that you wouldn't normally have access to if you didn't establish legal paternity. You're gonna learn how to fill out the acknowledgement of paternity. If you've never heard of the acknowledgement of paternity, it's a very, very important document that you can use to help you establish legal paternity. And I'm gonna show you how to fill this out and what this looks like. And last but not least, you're gonna understand the percentages of child support in the state of Texas. 
Okay, I'm gonna talk to you about how these things work, how much income will be taken from your check. You're gonna learn a lot of things. I'm about to give you some game on how to kind of quote unquote beat the system so you can be involved in your child's life. I don't know about you, but how many fathers or dads or whatever you wanna call yourself have been told you can't see your kids? How many of y'all have heard that? You can't see your kids or I'm keeping your, your son or your daughter away from you, right? Those words are devastating. Right. They impact our lives in ways that we don't really think they impact us, because to tell me I can't see someone that I help create is very mind blowing to me. So I'm going to show you how to go around those things so you can see your child when you want to. You can be involved. You can be the father that you want to be, because we all deserve to be the father that we want to be in our children's lives. So let's dive on in here. The opening statement. Contrary to popular belief, just because you have a child with someone doesn't mean that you automatically have rights to that child. I'm going to say that again. Contrary to popular belief, just because you have a child with someone does not mean that you automatically have rights to that child. All right? This is one of the most common uh, misconstrued things that most people think, especially men. Well, I got a baby with this person. You know what I mean? I'm automatically have right. I automatically have rights to that child. I can see that child. I can go to the child's school. I can look at medical records. I can get school records. This is something that we believe, but I'm here to tell you right now, just because you have a child with someone does not mean that you automatically have rights to that child. And let me share this with you. The states does not recognize you as a legal father. The state does not recognize you as a legal father if you're not married to that uh, woman and that child, right? If you're not married, they don't recognize you as the legal father. There's a couple of things you got to do to be recognized as the legal father so you can get some of these perks. You know, women have a lot of, lot of perks. They have a lot of access to their kids. And men, we get the back burner, right? We're put on the back burner. There's a lot of things that we can and cannot do because we have an established legal paternity. And that's the importance of this, of this topic today. I want you to understand, once you establish legal paternity, it's a game changer for you. There's not anything that you will not be able to do when it comes to being involved in your child's life. All right? If you can, if you're watching this somewhere, right, in the chat box, I want you to type legal paternity. Wherever you are, if you're on your phone, if you're on a computer, type legal paternity, because I want to get this engraved in your brain, like legal paternity is the way to go. So go ahead and do me a favor, type that in the chat box. We got somebody to type legal paternity in the chat box. It's very, very important that you learn how to establish legal paternity so you can have access to your children. Perfect. All right, so let's look at some statistics here because the statistics are mind blowing, right? And the numbers don't lie. So more than 20 million children live in a home without the physical presence of a father, 20 million. And million more have dads who are physically present, but emotionally absent. I don't know about you, but I'm one who didn't grow up in the household with my father, right? Now, that, that's not to say I didn't have men in my life, but I didn't grow up in the household with my own biological father. And because of that, I was subjected to a lot of things. I was provoked by other men. I was put in positions to have to fight off other men. I was put in positions to have to protect my mother and my brothers from these abusive guys, right? First thing first, these guys didn't have any attachment to me. They were only involved with my mother. And because my biological father wasn't there to protect me, because he did not establish legal paternity for me, he just had me with my mother and he got out the picture. Right. That affected my life tremendously. I'm talking about mental abuse, physical abuse, suicide attempts, all because my father wasn't present in the household. Now, we had people that my mother had boyfriends who came in, they wanted to play the dad role, but they wasn't emotionally. They weren't mostly there for me. You know what I'm saying? And, and back in the day, you know, we talked about have roles change and, and have things change amongst fathers. Back in the day, in the early days, in the 50s and 60s, you know, fathers were considered hard work and they went out, they, they provided things of that nature. But today, we need men who are going to be emotionally present for their children. Because we have children right now who have a lot of needs. There's a lot of things going on in the world around them. There's a lot of influences. And we can be there physically. But where are we emotionally? We need that emotional connection with our kids because I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of our kids sit in their room and they suffer by themselves in silence because they don't feel like they have anyone that's going to understand. They don't feel like they have anyone that's listening to them. And I've been in that position. There were times in my life when I was a young kid coming up, 
I had to sit in my room by myself and deal with all the emotional hell by myself because I didn't have my biological father there. And the men that were in my life were abusive and they were not there for me. <clears throat> and that's where the suicide attempts came from. <clears throat> Excuse me, because I didn't feel like I had anybody in my life that could emotionally connect with me, that could protect me, that can be the man I needed them to be in my life. I wanted all those things. And I don't care if it was a great guy that my mom was with. If it didn't come from my own biological father, that's why I struggled the most because I'm a part of him and he's a part of me. But for him not establishing legal paternity, it caused a lot of damage in my life. Let's look at some numbers right here. So two parent homes. So we broke it up into categories. We got Asian children, our Hispanic children, white children, and African American, African American children. In the chat box, I want you to type in who do you think live in the household with two parents the most? Like what numbers? Do you think it's the Asian children, the white children, Hispanic children, or African-American children? Who do you think live in two-parent households with the highest percentages? Asian children, Hispanic children, white children, African-American children. Go ahead and type that in the chat box for me. I know the answers. I know the statistics. I know the numbers on this. I wonder if you know. Take your time, go ahead and write that in the chat box because I want you to see something here because there's something that we have to fix within our community, right? The numbers that when I saw these numbers, I was blown away. So let's break it down. Asian children, 85% of them live in two-parent households. 85% live in two-parent household. Hispanic children, 65% live in two-parent households. 65% two-parent households, white children, 75% live with both parents, biological parents. And then we have the African-American child, 36%, 36% live with both of their parents, biological parents. In the African-American community, only 36% live with two parents, have two-parent households. The numbers across the board, here's a Fast difference. What are we doing? Is it the mass incarceration rate? What is it? What's happening? Why are we lacking in these numbers when it comes to being in our children's life? I'm going to tell you, because legal paternity was not established. And this is where the problem lies. So let's look at these things right here. Man by design, father by choice. What type of father are you? Have you ever stopped and asked yourself that question? What type of father are you? What type of father am I? Who am I in my kid's life? Am I better than what my father was to me for my children? Or am I the same person that my father was in my life? Absent, not emotionally connected. I'm a father, I have two girls. I have an 18 year old and I have an 11 year old. And let me share something with you. It became present to me and known to me that I've physically been in my children's life since conception. I have not missed a day of my children's life. But I was absent emotionally. And let me tell you why I was absent emotionally. Because I didn't understand what it meant to be emotionally connected to anyone because I didn't have a man to emotionally connect to me to show me how to be a father on the, in the emotional component of it. So I struggled with that with my own girls. I have two girls. And we know Girls are very emotional beings. And I was not meeting their emotional needs because I didn't know how to. I'm a man by design all day. But I'm a father by choice. I chose to be a father for my children. And I'm going to talk to you about how I established legal paternity for my girls. Because it's important that you know this. So let's break down the three types of fathers and the roles that they play. So the first type of father that there is is a dad, and the dad is emotionally engaged with the child, nurturing, guiding, and supporting. Now, it's often said that men don't know how to be emotionally engaged. They, they're they not nurturers, but I don't believe that. I believe that we are nurturers. I believe that we do know how to go in and nurture our children. We do know how to be emotionally engaged with our children, but we have to see some examples sometimes. But one of my biggest philosophy is this. You don't have to see a good example to be a good example. But there are some things that we must 
learn. Some things we must see in order for it to happen and be applicable in our lives. So we have dads. Some of you guys growing up, you had a dad. It may not have been your biological father, but you had a dad in your life that loved you. You had a dad that stepped in, took on those responsibilities, that nurtured you, that engaged with you, that connected with you, that supported your events and the things that you've done. It may not have been your own biological father, but many of you had a dad in your life. Me, I had men in and out of my life. Would I consider any of them dads? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because they wasn't nurturing. They were abusive. They wasn't engaging. They didn't guide me down the right path. They wasn't supportive of the things that I've done or I was doing at that time. That's one role. Legal father. This is very, very important. Legal father is the one that's responsible for his or her child legally and financially, right? Legally and financially, responsible for his child legally and financially. But what do you mean legally and financially? You're there, you're connected. There's a lot of legal things that must take place in the child life that you need to be there for. And if you have not established legal paternity, you cannot do that. Because again, the course does not recognize you as a legal father of any child just because you had a baby with someone. There's proper documentation that has to be filled out. There are other pathways to establish legal paternity so you can be the legal father in your child's life. And then the last but not least, biological father. And this is the man who genetically created the child from his sperm. All right. Now, every one of us has a biological father, whether they're present or they're not whether they're active or not active. All of us have a biological father. But how many of us needed a dad? How many of us needed a legal father? Let me share something with you. You can play all these, one person can play all these roles in a child's life if they want to. You can have this, you can have this child. You can become the legal father by establishing legal paternity through the three pathways that we're going to talk about here shortly. And you can be the dad. I needed a dad. I, I, I have a biological father, but my biological father was not a great dad to me. My biological father was not a great dad to me. He did not support me. In fact, he caused more trauma in my life than any other man that I've had to endure. My own biological father. He didn't support me. He didn't nurture me. My biological father told me that I owe him. My biological father told me that he doesn't have to do nothing for me. Talk down on me. Never said I'm proud of your accomplishments. Never gave me a pat on the back. I can't tell you the last time my father told me that he loved me. Never. He's a biological father, but he's a terrible dad. I feel like a man that cares for their children will make sure that they are taken care of making sure they're being guided down the right path, making sure they're supporting their dreams and their endeavors. Again, many of you all have a biological father, but do you have a dad? Do you have somebody that was legally responsible for you? That's what we got to get to, y'all. Our children need us to play all these roles. I had different men come in and, my, in and out of my life to try to play these roles. And guess what? All of them failed. But I can't say this. I can't say this. I'm sorry. I did learn something from every one of them. I learned what not to do. I learned what not to become. I learned how to be a better father to my daughters because I did not want to take on the characteristics or the qualities of these men that came in my life and they did not support me. They did not nurture me. They did not love me. I established legal paternity for my kid. I'm going to tell you, I did it at the age of 17. I established legal paternity for my child. Well, CJ, how did you go about establishing legal paternity? What does that necessarily mean for us to establish legal paternity? How do I do it? If you're struggling right now to see your kids and you're told, oh, you can't, you can't see your kids, you can't visit your kid this week, you're paying child support. All these things is happening to you right now. And you're like, I pay child support, but I can't see my kid. Why is that the case? You can pay child support all day. That doesn't mean that you're fit to be in that kid's life. So let's, let's break it down. Let's walk through it. So there's three pathways to establishing legal paternity. All right. Three pathways to establishing legal paternity. The first way is this. Marriage. 
So being married prior to the child being born is one of the three ways to establish legal paternity for your kids. All right. Marriage is the first way to do it. Once you're married and you're married before the child is born, you're automatically presumed the legal father of that child. Automatically, if you're married. Now, if you're like me, I had my daughter at the age of 16, 17 years old. I couldn't get married at that age. Right. So that was not one of the ways I used to establish legal paternity for my daughter. Right. Marriage was eventually coming. But I wasn't going to marry someone just so I can establish legal paternity for my child because I didn't know if I wanted to be with my child's mother or not. I didn't know how things were going to work out, right? So I didn't marry her right away. In fact, we didn't get married until seven years after my daughter was born. So I didn't use one of these ways to establish legal paternity for my daughter. There's another method to establish legal paternity. But if you are married prior to your child being born, you are automatically presumed the legal father by the court system and everyone else that's involved. Second way, court order DNA test. Listen, court order DNA test, uh, not the Murray show, <laughs> all right? Not the Murray show. I know a lot of people watch Murray. They're talking about, you are not the father. Listen, that's a television show. We're talking about court order DNA test. Fellas, let me give you some game real quick because this is very important that you know this. If you've been summoned to go to court, to take a DNA test for a child. And in your mind, you're like, that ain't my kid. That's not my child, I'm not gonna go. What do you think is gonna happen? What do you think is gonna happen? If you've been summoned to court to go take a DNA test for a child and you don't show up, what do you think is gonna happen to you? Go ahead and type in the chat box what you think is gonna happen. I'm gonna explain to you, but type in the chat box, what do you think will happen if you were summoned to go to court to take a DNA test and you did not show up to go to court to take that DNA test. What do you think is gonna to happen to you? Go ahead and type that in the chat box for me real quick. Because I've heard stories. Now, I worked in the child support office a while back. I was a child support officer, so I know how these things work. And I've seen a lot of men suffer at the hands of the lack of knowledge. Right? We perish for the lack of knowledge. Let me see what some of these comments say real quick. I'm, I'm curious to see what some of these comments are. What do you think is gonna happen? You lose rights, you won't have any rights, all right? What else? What else do you think is going to happen? It's good stuff. Let me share with you what's going to happen. If you've been summoned to court to take a DNA test and you do not show up, you will be automatically made the legal father by default. Ooh, I know mind blowing, right? So if they say come to court and they summons you and you don't show up, you're going to be automatically made the legal father by default for a child that may or may not be yours. And now you're responsible for the next 18 years. I know some of y'all are like, are you serious? Absolutely. Because the thing is this, and this is how the courts look at it. If you're not the father, then just show up and prove that you're not the father, right? The worst that can happen is this. If this is the worst thing, you're the father. But if you say, I ain't paying for no DNA test, guess what? If you go and it shows up that you're not the father, you don't have to pay for the DNA test. The one who requested the DNA test have to pay for it. And those tests were about like 400 some bucks. I'm not sure if they're going up, but I do know they run about 400 some dollars. But that's one way to establish legal paternity for your kid, right? So it's not that you don't, it's not that you lose rights. You don't have rights at all. You become the legal father by default. Now, how many people will be blown away if you got a knock on your door with some paperwork saying you are the father of this child? all because you failed to not show up to court. It happens. It has happened numerous of times. Men have been summoned to go to court. They didn't show up to court. They was made the legal father by default for a child that was not theirs. They had to take care of them for the last, for the next 18 years. That's something the system won't tell you. That's something most people don't know about. And the last way to establish legal paternity for your child is the acknowledgement of paternity. In the chat box, do me a favor, type in AOP. In the chat box, type in AOP. This is a very, very important document, and this is the way I established legal paternity for my daughter. I did not do a court order DNA test. I was not married to the uh, mother of my, of my child at all, right? Um, I did the acknowledgement of paternity, the AOP. So type that in the chat box, type in AOP. Now, I'm not sure for those who are listening how you establish legal paternity for your child. I'm not sure if you was married prior to your child being born. I'm not sure if you took a court order DNA test or you went this route. 
All right, so let me talk to you about the acknowledgement of paternity. This is a very, very important document. In fact, this document is so important. This is the only document in the state of Texas that a minor can sign without parents' consent. This is the only legal binding document that a minor can sign without their parents' consent. So if you have a baby at the age of 12 years old, you can sign this document. If you have a baby at the age of 13, 14, whatever age you are, you can sign this document without your parents' consent. And it's a legal binding document stating that you are the parent. This document is for those who are not married. All right, let me show you what it looks like. I have a little clip right here. Hopefully you can see this. So this is the acknowledgement of paternity. This has replaced, in a sense, you don't sign the birth certificate, you sign this, okay? And so this document is very confusing, especially for a 16 year old like myself when I signed this document. No one explained to me what this document was. They came into the doctor's office, to the, to the hospital room where I was at. We just had our baby. They gave me a stack of documents. They told us to look through them and fill them out. This is what I signed, and I did not know what I signed. This document lets the courts know and everybody know that I'm the legal father of this kid. One thing that I want to, I want you to err on the side of caution. If you're not sure if the baby is yours or not, do not sign this document. Do not sign this document if you're not sure that the kid is yours. Because once you sign this document right here, and you say, this kid is mine, once you sign the not for fraternity, and you say, this kid is mine, you have 60 days to rescind this document and say, you know what, this kid is not mine. If you do not do it in the 60 days, that 60 day window, it closes, you find out that kid's not yours after 60 days, that's you, you're stuck. There's nothing you can do to get out of it. So I would highly recommend if y'all know you're not married and you know things are going on, even if you are married, right? And you want to be able to trust your significant other. But if you're not married and you're like, I don't know, there's a gut feeling that this kid may not be mine. You feel it on the inside. You may want to go about getting a DNA test first because you don't want to sign something and then you're stuck with a kid that's not yours for the rest of your life. And I, I don't say that to sound mean or rude, but you don't want to take care of something that's not yours. You have no emotional ties to it. That's how I truly believe that the guys that was in my life who abused me, they didn't want to take care of me. They didn't, they wasn't emotionally connected to me. It was okay for them to mistreat me. It was okay for them to do the things that they did to me. This document right here is very important. So let me break it down how we sign this document. So it says, we declare under the penalty of perjury that blank, the biological father, middle name and last name, is the biological father of the child. So what you're going to do right here is you're going to sign your name in the name of the child. He's gonna put the day the child was born, okay? The city, county, and then the state, all right? Then the mother's gonna fill out her piece, okay? Now, check this out. This is one of the biggest ones that blew me away. Say, for example, your girl is pregnant. Y'all get married, right? You get married. The courts are automatically gonna assume because y'all are married that the child is yours. Say she's, say she's pregnant from a prior relationship, right? Y'all get married. You think the kid is yours. The kid is not yours. The courts are going to automatically presume that you are the legal father based on the fact that y'all are married. The kid is not yours. You're going to automatically be that child's father based on the fact that you were married. Now, there's a part down here that you can fill out called the den denial of paternity. This is very important because if you're the biological father, you're going to sign that I am not the child. The mother has to sign, and guess who else has to sign? The biological father of that kid. So you need three signatures at the bottom of this right here, this denial part, to say that you are not the father. So if you're married to her, she's already pregnant, when y'all got married, come to find out you're not the kid father, y'all need to do some work. Y'all need to come together and figure out how this is gonna work right here. Okay, you gotta have to, you need all three signatures for this to take place. I know this is crazy, but this is how the system works. You're gonna automatically be presumed the father if you're married, even though the baby's not yours. So you're gonna need the three signatures of the biological mother, the biological father, and then yourself as the husband to say, I am not this kid's father. You sign this right here, you submit this to the hospitals, and guess what? They'll take care of it from there. But y'all make sure that you establish legal paternity the right way. Well, what are the benefits of establishing legal paternity? Well, let's talk about it real quick. The first one, 
for your kids. Children has access to a complete medical history. Social security benefits, child knows who or his or her father is and their side of the family. Y'all, I can't tell you how many children are out right now that does not have a complete medical history. The complete medical history is so important. Say for example, on their mother's side, you know, somebody may be diagnosed with something, it's hereditary, something on their mother's side, right? But they run tests and they find out it's not from their mother's side. The person who did not establish legal paternity, which is the father, they don't have a complete medical history of their father's side. So they may be sick with a terminal illness and they don't know where it comes from because the father's medical information is missing. My father's name was not on any of my certificates, birth certificates, nothing. He was not married to my mother. He did not take a court order DNA test and he did not sign the acknowledgement of paternity. On my birth certificate, the father, where it says father, it says unknown. You know how it made me feel as a child? Even as a man, my documentation on my stuff, it says unknown. And I know who my dad is. But the courts don't. The system doesn't. I don't have a complete medical history for my dad's side. I can call him and ask him, but just imagine if he were to establish legal paternity for me, I would have access to that. I would have access to social security benefits. I would know that side of the family. And this is the thing in, in our community as black folks. You know, we, 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 we have kids and then we go around, we try to, you know, meet the other side of the family, but you know, there's always these fallouts. There's all of, always these things that goes wrong. Parents die, the father died. You don't get no social security benefits. You don't get all the things that you should be able to have access to because they didn't establish legal paternity. And that's why I'm stressing it. The kids get benefits from a legal, legal paternity being established. Complete medical history, social security benefits, medical benefits. There's a lot of things that a child gets. Not only the child, you as a father and the mother gets uh, benefits. So what are the benefits for a mother? The father is legally responsible for his child. So if you, you're a mother, the father is legally responsible for the child, okay? Then the child becomes eligible for medical and social security benefits. And not only that, it establishes your child's legal right to his or her father. They need to have a legal right to their fathers. And that's what we're lacking at. That's what's missing in our community. No legal responsibility for our kids. That's why we have a lot of kids running around doing any and everything do because there's nobody legally responsible for them as far as the paternal side of it. I'm going to share some of my story. I'm going to be honest. I'm gonna be full transparency. I said my dad wasn't there in my life. Now, when I was in middle school, I was doing things I should not have been doing. Well, what were you doing, CJ? I was sleeping over my girlfriend's house in middle school, staying the night with her. She would come stay the night at my house, all these things. Now, I'm gonna say this. I wasn't living with my mom at this time, either, right? I had got away from my mom. I was living with another family member. You know what I mean? And these are things that I was doing. No guidance, no support, no none of that. I was out here on my own, handling business on my own. Nobody was, my dad wasn't legally responsible for me. And this is the crazy thing. My dad lived right around the corner. Didn't come pick me up, didn't check on me, didn't call, none of that. So I was out here doing my thing. And I thank God I didn't get nobody pregnant when I was in middle school. Because I was definitely out there putting in work. Just imagine if I would have got somebody pregnant when I was 12. 13 years old. I didn't know about, I didn't know how to establish no legal paternity. My kid would have been another child in the system. Again, we perish for lack of knowledge. Then what are the benefits for the father? Fathers, here it is. You get access to a child's medical records. So if you want to know what's going on with your children, you have access to their medical records. You have visitation rights. How many fathers right now are struggling with visitation with their kids? I can't tell you how many guys come to me and say, man, Jones, I, I can't see my kids, man. I'm paying child support. I can't see my kid. I can't see my kid. I'm like, did you establish legal paternity? They're like, what's that? I'm like, here we go. If you did not establish legal paternity and the mother says, I don't want you to see your kids, what are you going to fight? What? Who was on your side? No one. <clears throat> no one. You can have... You can partition the court for child support. So say, for example, and this is, this is a little bit of game. 
Say you got your child and your child lives with you six months and one day out the year. That means you are the custodial parent at that point because you have them longer throughout the year by one day. So if you want to, you can put your child's mother on child support. One day makes a difference. Six months and one day. All right. So you can petition the court for child support. Your name can appear on the acknowledgement of attorney and it gives you legal rights to your kids. So there's ways to beat the system. There's ways to actually work with the system. There's a lot of guys saying, man, the system is out to get me. The system is this, that, and the other. Listen, I'm not saying the system is fair. I'm not saying that there's not any flaws within the system. But what are we doing on our part to make sure that we're not being slammed by the system? Are we taking the necessary steps to, to establish legal paternity for our kids so we can have access to our kids? I'm going to tell you right now, there ain't no way in the world that I'm going to be out here knowing I got a kid and not taking care of my kid. There ain't no way in the world. There ain't no way in the world I'm going to allow somebody to tell me I can't see my kid. It ain't happening. Because I'm responsible for the outcomes of that kid, especially if I know I didn't play my part from the age of conception to uh, 18 years old. I'm responsible for that. My two daughters right now, I've been in their life since day one, have not missed a day, and I established legal paternity for my kids. I can go up to the school and pick up my younger daughter if I want to. I can look at my, my daughter's medical records. If me and my wife ever split up, guess what? I have access and rights to see my daughter. She can't tell me I can't see my daughter. She can't tell me I can't go visit my daughter on certain days. There's a lot of battle and custody battles when it comes to the holidays. Oh, well, can I see my kid on Christmas? No, I'm keeping the kids. You can't fight. You have nothing to fight. You haven't established legal paternity. That's why it's important. Not only do you benefit as the father, the mother benefits and the child benefits. It's very, very critical that we do this. And let me talk about some percentages, and then we're going to end this thing right here. Child support. A lot of people hate paying child support. A lot of times, the people who are responsible for paying child support is the non-custodial parent. A non-custodial parent is the parent who the child does not live with. All right. So how does this work? For each child that you have, the non-custodial parent will pay, required to pay 20% of their income. 20% of their income. All right. So you make $800 uh, uh, every two weeks, 20% of that is coming out your check. 20%. I don't care how much you make. They're taking 20%. For each additional child you have by the same woman. So say you have your first child. That's an automatic 20%. Your second child, that's an additional 5%. So in total, you have 25% of child support that's coming out of your check. So you got two kids by the same woman, y'all separate, that's 25% automatically. This is the thing. The court, the child support court can take up to 50% of your income, but they can garnish more if they want to. So they can automatically take 50% of your income, income uh, that you make, that you bring in. 50%, but they can garnish more if they want to. So, listen, it's very, very important that you know how these percentages work, all right? And then this is some more free game I'm about to give you. Say you and your girl have been together for four years, all right, four years. Your, your child is now four years old. If they, y'all split up, if they wanted to, they can go back four years to where the child was born and collect income, uh, I'm sorry, collect uh, child support, four years. So you're automatically going to start in the rear. Just, ain't that crazy? But you can beat them to the punch if you say, I'm going to put myself on child support. If you put yourself on child support, so say y'all split up, because you can't put yourself on child support and y'all live in the same household because the money be coming right back. But if y'all split up and you say, you know what? I'm going to put myself on child support because she doesn't. And you start paying the courts, guess what? You don't start off in the rear just like that. You stay ahead of the game. And y'all do not give monetary gifts. Do not give monetary gifts. Don't say, oh, I kicked her out $400 this month. Or I kicked her out $1,300 this month. Because guess what? If the court system don't have a track record of that, it was a free gift to them. They don't consider that child support because it didn't go through the system. I know a lot of guys who fell victim of saying, oh, I gave my baby mama $400. Or oh, I did A, B, C, and D. Those are gifts. I don't care if you have receipts. Those are gifts. If it didn't go through the court system, they consider that as a gift. Another tie up is this. Man, my baby mama, man, she spent money getting her hair done, her nails done. I ain't, I ain't paying child support. Guess what? This is what the court says. 
they don't care what they spend the money on because most of the time the kids with them anyways so if they want to get their hair and nails done they've already dished out the money put roof over their head to provide food on the table transportation so they can spend that money however they want to that's how the system works they take 20 percent automatically but they can garnish up to they can garnish more they can garnish more than 50 percent of your income that's why it's important, y'all, that we establish legal paternity so we can know how the system works, so the system can be on our side. So, for example, if you establish legal paternity and she says you can't see your kid, guess what? You can go to court. Y'all can discuss that. Somebody's going to get in trouble. Somebody's getting in trouble because they're not following the legal documentation that y'all both signed. Somebody's getting in trouble. If you don't pay child support, guess what? After a while, if you're a teacher, they can take your teacher certification. If you're a doctor, they can strip you of your uh, doctor's license. If you are a therapist, they can rob you of your, uh, strip you of your therapy license. And the last resort, they put you in jail for six months. And just because you're in jail does not mean that you don't have to pay. It's just a crew, rearages. On top of that, you're responsible for paying child support. All the way up until the child turns 18 and or graduate college first, whatever, whatever one's come first. You're responsible for doing it. But if you owe back pay, they can be 30 some years old. You still got to pay <laughs> because that's rear just that you're still responsible for. So there's a lot of stuff when it comes to this child support and how child support works. All right. There's a lot of things that comes with uh, established legal paternity. Again, you can be a father. You can be a biological father. You can be a legal father or you can be all three. You can be one or the other. All right. You can get married to establish legal paternity. Court order DNA test. You can sign the acknowledgement of paternity. All of these things are in place for you to win, but you got to be educated on. So what I want to do right now is I want to take some time for anyone to write any questions in the chat box, and I want to answer these questions for you if you have any, because I want to make sure you walk away with with the knowledge that you need if you're faced with any of these situations. Let's see what's in the chat box right now. AOP, perfect. Yep, I want to give you a little bit of time to ask me some questions. I know it's virtual, so it's a little different. Um, but yeah, type in any questions that you have in the chat box, something that you want to know more about, something that um, I didn't cover that you like, man, I want to know how this works. Go ahead and put it in the chat box for me. We'll take a few minutes to do that. Y'all can't, I can't stress how important it is to establish legal paternity for your kids they need it you need it you need it they never have to question the mother and who she is she carried the baby but they most definitely go question us as the fathers and i'm so thankful that i established legal paternity for my both of my daughters i was married to i was married to my, my child's mother uh for my second child but my first one i had to sign that acknowledgement of paternity at 16. i didn't know what the hell i was signing nobody explained it to me so now I have all the rights to my kids. Any questions in the chat box? Give a couple more seconds. Do I type this stuff in? <clears throat> How are we doing on time? Doing pretty good. Eight minutes. Let's see what we got. And I appreciate y'all for staying with me, listening to me, allowing me to share this knowledge with you all. I know this is not like a normal me getting up, giving you a motivational speech, but I also want to get away from that for a little bit and give you some knowledge, some information that you can walk away with. This is a gem that you can actually put in your pocket. And one of the beautiful things about gems, you can take them with you. All right, so we don't have any questions. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to go ahead and follow me Oh, oh, wait, here we go. Here we go. Let's see. Oh, here's a survey. Okay, perfect. All right, and if you can, be so kind of fill out the survey for those who did uh, join the session. Give me some feedback. All the feedback will be helpful. I really appreciate it. And the last thing I want you to do is follow me on social media. Um, you can connect with me on Facebook at CJ the Empowerment Speaker. 
I'm on Instagram at I am Corey D. Jones, Twitter at CD Jones 25 Corey. Um, here's my website. Here's my email. It's a way you can get in contact with me. Go ahead and take a minute to write this stuff down because I want to connect. You know, I'm a real person, real authentic, real transparent. Anything you want to know about me, most definitely I'll share with you. You know, if you're looking to get into the motivational speaking realm, I can actually help you do that. Have my own empowerment academy. Um, Corey D. Jones, LLC. Lead life coaching services. I'm also a certified life coach. You know, if you want to write a book, I can help you get that done. I do a lot of things to help people in my community because I want to see people win. I want to see people thrive. So connect with me. Let's build together. And um, if you got any type of speaking events coming up that you need any speakers for, feel free to reach out to me. I'm also a voice of an artist for Fearless Motivation. I'm um, doing a lot of great work with them. So I'm out here I'm doing a lot of things. I stay low key, but I'm definitely out here. I'm most definitely moving. So again, I appreciate everyone. Again, thank you, man, and me for having me. This is a phenomenal organization. Isaac Rose doing some amazing things. He's definitely a visionary. Um, man puts in numerous hours. He's a real family man. He cares about his children, cares about his wife, and he cares about the community and making sure people have strong, lasting relationships. That's why I love him. That's why I rock with him. So I want to thank you all again for allowing me to be here and sharing with you all. And um, I wish you all the best moving forward. Hey, continue to weather the storm. If you quit, the only guarantee is failure. But if you keep going, the possibility of success is promising to you. All right, y'all. Corey, we just want to thank you, man. That was some um, amazing, amazing, valuable information. I definitely learned a lot. And uh, I'm going to be using a lot of that information to help other men that I find in, in similar situations. Um, so we thank you for your, for your time and your expertise. And um, yeah, man, outstanding job. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all for having me. As always, man, it's a pleasure. It's a family. I love it. What's up, Banks? <laughs> yeah so uh yeah so i guess we can just uh I can keep watching or whatnot and um anything else y'all need from me oh uh, no i think you're good man okay perfect all right appreciate it i'll talk to y'all guys later all right see you soon go ahead and stop your recording